I am so excited for the Riotathon. There's no real word for the world that Rick Riordan has created. We know that all of his works take place in the same universe and on the same world such that the characters can interact between books, but we actually don't have a word for it same way that J.K. Rowling doesn't have a name for the world of Harry Potter. That's it. It's the Harry Potter universe or the works of J.K. Rowling, call it what you will. But that's just a baseline. I'll explain how we know here in a little bit. But the main thing that I thought I would do for everybody in the lead up to the Riotathon is go through the reading list that I posted in my last vlog. We're going to use my two shelves here as a chronology. The first series of books is called Percy Jackson and the Olympians, abbreviated PJO. It includes The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian. The first five books introduce us to a lot of characters that I love dearly, but the main thing is it introduces the titular Percy and it also introduces a character named Annabeth Chase, which we'll get back to. The next series is called Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus. It includes The Lost Hero, The Son of Neptune, The Mark of Athena, The House of Hades, and The Blood of Olympus. You'll notice a bit of a gap here. I did that on purpose because the series do take place one after another, but as you'll see later, you could fill this time block with some of the other short stories that Rick Riordan has put out in his companion books. There's one more series that directly follows after the Heroes of Olympus and makes reference to the same characters, and that is The Trials of Apollo. They include The Hidden Oracle, The Dark Prophecy, and The Burning Maze, at least of the novels that are published so far. The Trials of Apollo, by the way, are abbreviated as TTOA. These three book series generally center around characters that are part of the Greek and Roman pantheons. Now we're going to talk about the Cain Chronicles. This focuses on the Egyptian pantheon. This trilogy includes The Red Pyramid, The Throne of Fire, and The Serpent's Shadow. Now, I understand that for some people, the idea of jumping out of one chronology of stories with characters that you're starting to become familiar with and jumping into a completely different story can seem a little daunting. But for the purposes of publication order and chronology, I just want to let you know that these books take place right there. But to tell you the truth, that chronology only matters for people who want to read the short stories that proved to fans of Rick Riordan that his characters all exist in the same universe. In these short stories, Percy Jackson met Carter Kane, who is one of the main characters in this trilogy. Then you had Annabeth Chase, who I mentioned earlier, met Carter's sister, Sadie Kane. Those three short stories are all collected here. But just to be on the safe side, I would put this short story collection right there because the third of those short stories takes place after the blood of Olympus. As far as reading order, I might suggest this. So you've got Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus, then the Cain Chronicles, and then this short story collection. And then at least you're reading continuously with the Cain siblings. Or read the Percy Jackson and the Olympians quintet, then the Heroes of Olympus quintet, then read The Trials of Apollo, knowing that there are more books coming, and then read The Cain Chronicles and the crossover stories. But let's go with this reading order. I'll tell you why. Because we have one more primary novel series to discuss, which is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, abbreviated MCGA. It includes The Sword of Summer, The Hammer of Thor, and The Ship of the Dead. So, what about recommended reading order? Most people will probably do this, especially the ones who want to read one storyline with one set of characters, get attached to them, and keep going. In actuality, though, Magnus Chase is taking place concurrently with The Trials of Apollo. So you could really read them Trials of Apollo, Magnus Chase, Trials of Apollo, Magnus Chase, Trials of Apollo, Magnus Chase. But I can take a wild guess that most people are going to want to read them in this order. 
I won't go through the chronology of the rest of the companion books in this video, but if you're interested you can check out the full list that my friend has compiled. I just wanted to show you that they come in two varieties. You have books like this, which are the size of demigods and magicians, and they basically contain short stories and sometimes interviews and maps. Like this. A lot of world detail that is important to fans like myself who are making fanfic and fan art. You may be wondering if you absolutely have to read these companion books in order to understand the full chronology of Rick Riordan series, and you definitely don't. These are all extra materials that are a benefit to his fans, and that's it. But the benefit is you can tell that they're also all very small, and because of the style that Rick Riordan writes in, they're also all from the character's perspectives. They take place in his fiction, but they are all also original works and short stories. Then you've got the other kind. This is Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. There's another book of similar size and scope called Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes. Now again, because of the style that Rick Riordan writes in, this is from the perspective of Percy Jackson with additional information that the character himself might share. However, if you're looking for anything that you really think you can skip, this is it. Because ultimately, these books are just retellings of the Greek and Roman myths. We have one last book to talk about that has Rick Riordan's name attached to it. Unfortunately, I don't own it yet, so I'll have to show it to you right here. It is Arusha and the End of Time. It is under the imprint Rick Riordan presents because he is not writing it himself. You'll notice that he touched on Egyptian mythology. Now with Rick Riordan presents he is able to boost authors that are not himself and are of the same descent of the mythologies that they are writing for. Arusha and the End of Time deals with the Hindu mythology. We also have books coming from Mayan folklore, note not Aztec, Korean folklore featuring a fox spirit, Cuban folklore, and Navajo. And there's one more book that I want to touch on which is currently being billed as focusing on African folktales. Well that is it for me today. I hope this helps you prepare for the Riot-a-thon. It's coming up soon, June, July, and August, and maybe now you can see why I wanted you to it over the course of three months. So from Morgan and I, see you soon. Take care.